Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Friend in the Navigator Parish and Our Lady of Good Hope Church. Today is the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please take a moment to silence or turn off your cell phone. Today we hear a young Solomon meekly asking God for wisdom and understanding so that he might properly distinguish right from wrong and judge with kindness and compassion. We often find ourselves misleading ourselves about right and wrong or judging others hastily and unfairly. Let us take this opportunity today to pray that we may emulate Solomon and welcome God's wisdom and mercy into our lives so that we can be guided in using right judgment. Mass today will be offered for Joyce Richard. Now let us have a moment of silence as we prepare for the celebration of Mass. God, the God rich in mercy. Before him humbly we acknowledge that we are sinners. We acknowledge his great gift of mercy and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. He was sent to heal the contrite of heart Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where they will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, Jesus speaks in parables, and as we know, we've been hearing it for the past few weeks, these parables, which are stories of, in, of the times of Jesus that people would have understood, but clearly he, he invites them to know in this, in, in this parable, there's so many layers and meanings there that we are called to grasp and to embrace and to understand. But it was this past Thursday's gospel that Jesus answers the question that is asked from one of the disciples. The question of Jesus, why do you speak to the crowd in parables? And here's a great understanding that he gives us. He said, he said to them in reply, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but not to them it has not been granted. This is why I speak to them in parables, because 
they look but do not see and hear but do not listen or understand. My friends, can you see and hear the meanings behind the parable we've been hearing? I, I really believe that if Jesus would be walking with the face of this earth today, I truly believe he would use the pandemic as a parable. Shall we do that? Shall we try to understand the story of the pandemic and what God could possibly be saying? First of all, we see, remember, seeing and hearing is what Jesus says. So we certainly see a lot of news and even largest cities in this world, famous landmarks, are empty. So strange, strange. How the COVID-19 has put nations on an infinite, or I should say indefinite, pause. That the virus has forced, it's overwhelmed hospitals to make traumatic choices. That this virus has canceled events, even the Olympics. That this virus has disrupted our lives. And that this virus has killed millions of people around the world. And this virus is not yet done. Never, my friends, in modern history have we seen countries around the world simultaneously place people, billions of people, on lockdown until now. That this virus threatens, I believe, humanity. It seems that life will never be the same after the coronavirus pandemic is ended. We certainly listen carefully to what the news tell us, you know, six feet distance, social distancing it can be healthy. Wearing masks in public is very important. However, my friends, I don't know if you know this, but nowhere in the news is God ever mentioned. Nowhere is in the news do they mention where God is at with all of this. I'm glad you believe and I'm glad you are here and we are indeed challenged to look with our hearts and our ears and our minds in the light of our own Catholic faith. Of course, with, with all due respect, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in awe of some of the scientists. I, I really love this guy, Fauci. I really do. He doesn't beat around the bush. He certainly speaks the fact and here's what happened and here's what you need to do. I like that. But my friends, that is not all that we are called to do. We Catholics, first and foremost, put our faith in God. We do. Because if we didn't, we would be a lot of trouble. With everything that's happening now, God must be, remember a parable now, he's telling us something, God must be telling the world something. But what is God saying? So we ask ourselves, with this coronavirus pandemic, what could God be telling us? What could God be telling you personally? Remember, we're called to see, we're called to hear. What is God telling the world? Why is God even allowing this pandemic? Because he has the power to stop it. He didn't create it, but he could stop it if he wanted to. Why is he allowing it to happen? There are a number of things I think God may be telling us. I think the first and foremost, he's saying, trust in me. Can you hear that? Can you understand that? Can you put that when you hear the news? Can you put that into your mind and heart when you may be struggling through this? What, my friends, is trust in God? It's not simply believing in Him, but firmly believing. It's solely in Him, relying on Him, completely placing one's confidence in God 
who is the truth and the only source of all goodness in our lives. What else is God saying through this parable of the pandemic? I want you to know that there are most priests would never even speak about this. But having studied scripture, I'm not afraid what people will say, but I must say, what can God be saying and doing to the wicked in this world? This could be a chastisement from God. Chastisement. From God a punishment for the wickedness of the world, for its unholy people. Yeah, even though we're all affected by this, the ch chastisement are clearly for some people. That a pandemic is one of the ways that God may express his wrath. Does he not have a right to do that? How many times did he do that in scripture? But he always turned around with love and mercy. He indeed, I believe, is giving us, the whole world, an opportunity for greater knowledge of him, for a turning to him, to a poor sin, and to worry maybe about their salvation, our salvation. God doesn't play games. Some people think, well, everybody's going to heaven anyways. Then if, if that's what we believe, then do we tear apart most of our scriptures? What's he telling us? He's certainly telling us to pray for ourselves. Look at the trial that Jesus went through before he, the night before he was crucified. Did he not pray for himself? He did. He prayed for four things. You're the fourth one. Need. But the first he prayed for was for himself. He knew he had to go through this trial in order, and this tribulation, in order to save us. And what a price he's paid to save us. But we must hear that from him. And be in awe of that price. Indeed, we are called to pray for ourselves. Some people may say, well, I'm not sick with the virus, so why should I pray? I don't believe God exists anyways. Many are there. God may be telling us to also pray for others. Years ago in the seminary, I remember hearing a quote by St. Thomas Aquinas. And he said about praying for others, he said, necessity binds us to pray for ourselves. Fraternal charity urges us to pray for others. And the prayer that fraternal charity offers is sweeter to God than that which is the outcome of necessity. Wow. To be able to pray for others. Is it not, my friend, an invitation for us, in light of Jesus' teachings, to even pray for the worst sinners in this world? I do a lot. I have to. I must. Because I'm called and challenged to love even our enemies, even those who cause harm to this world. I don't know if you're aware, my friends, but the year before, the three children in Fatima got the, the, the visions, the appearance of Mary, the year before, in Fatima, the three children received a couple of times a vision of the, known as the Angel of Portugal. Listen to the messages of Fatima. The Angel of Portugal, Lucia, Francisca, Jacinta, Francisco and Jacinta. Lucia always asked, well, what do you want of us? And the angel says, ask God what he wants of you. And when they prayed, you know what God told them? God told the children, what do you want, God? And he answered, I want you to console me. Isn't that amazing? 
They asked God, God, what can we do for you? And God said, spend some time consoling me. Well, we ask God a lot, eh? Consult me because I'm going through this, I'm going through that. Have you ever thought of maybe wondering what Jesus himself, what God is going through because of these situations in the world? Look how hard God's work for us at the cross. Does he need to be consoled? Is that maybe one of the messages of this parable on the pandemic? The angel said, let me teach you a prayer. And it's the prayer for others. And here's the prayer. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. And I beg you forgiveness for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. What a prayer. What a powerful prayer the angel of Portugal gave the children. Maybe God is calling us to pray. For all those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love him. There is power in our prayers for each other. What's God asking, my friends? He indeed is asking us a lot. I really believe that this time where we, even when the church doors were locked, closed, I believe that God may be allowing us to experience a foretaste of hell. A foretaste of hell. You know what tells me that? I don't know how many people, I still carry the pits which contain the little hosts, you know, the hosts, and even though we were told, don't, Bishop said, don't give it to anybody. You can't touch anybody, you can't do it. And I still did, <laughs> even on aisle seven at Hannaford's. <laughs> yeah, I gave a woman communion there because she longed for the host. And I looked both sides and I go, okay, no one's looking, would you like? To receive Jesus. And you know what? She cried. I remember when, when people started coming back to church and I would see them cry. And I asked, why are you crying? Because I'm so happy to receive Jesus again. Why do we need to realize that when church is locked, and I wouldn't be surprised if they are locked again sometime soon because of the way it's going. But it might be good for us to realize that without the Lord in his fullness and the gift that he gives to us, we may begin to realize, which may be a great gift, what hell will be like. Because hell is a place where God is not. Can you live for eternity without this God? It's like this heat that it gets worse tomorrow and Monday in the mid-90s here on the coast. That's going to be miserable, right? It's going to be miserable. Maybe that could be a foretaste of what hell will be like permanently. Is that what you want? Is that what we want? To be able to know what heaven is. It's time to know and time to realize what God is giving us. I firmly believe, my friends, that He's also calling us to repentance. I don't know if you're aware, but the coronavirus began here in the United States when? When Lent began. Isn't that interesting, eh? It began when Lent was starting in the church in our country. What's the message of Jesus at Lent? Do you remember? Jesus said, often, but I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish. Repentance, remorse for sin, my friends. To be able to know that is a feeling remorse, feeling that sin can disturb us. To pray for a realization of understanding what sin is and what it can do for us and what it can do permanently for us. That's why, my friends, Jesus gave us confession. Now, some of you, you may feel uncomfortable with that, and you may not be doing it Jesus' way. Oh, I go directly to God. Look at Scripture. That was not the prescription that Jesus gave. Even Satan knows very well that the mercy of God is poured into a person in the confessional. Don't let Satan take that away from you. Believe in that sacrament. 
because that's where his mercy is poured and is given freely, free of charge. Because that's the first thing he talked about, if you listen carefully to scripture after his resurrection. He spoke about the forgiveness of sin and how to receive it. My friends, there are plenty of things that God could be telling us during this pandemic that I dare call a parable. Where God is telling us, every person, even individually, he has a message for you. That you are called in this parable to understand a deeper level of what he wants of you. My friends, as we dare to listen to God even more attentively in prayer during this pandemic, may we all know that God is also speaking to the whole world, but to us personally. And so, my friend, be open. Be open. And let each one of us boldly respond to him. Speak, Lord, your servant. stand humbly and express our belief in this very God who continues to speak to us today. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father of all, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God, true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our sin, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became dead. For our sake he was crucified as a conscious power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and his Son, who with the Father and the Son is the door and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess the baptism of the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We have heard God's precious word and invitation, and now we humbly ask him to listen to our words of need and to respond to them. For the church, that we may realize the treasure of God's presence buried in each person we encounter, and that we live our lives in the joy of that knowledge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country's leaders, that they will work together to provide the medical care, support, and legislation needed to save lives, especially in the areas hit hard by the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our earth, that we may care for all God's creation and be mindful stewards of our planet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of Christ to banish violence from our midst and defend us against every evil. The Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the awareness of the sac sacredness of life from conception <coughs> to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, that God will bless and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom and understanding, that we might use these gifts of the Holy Spirit to build up the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for Joyce Richard. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Give us the grace, Lord, to understand that Mary, the Blessed Mother, our Mother too, also wants to assist us in our journey during this time of the pandemic. She, our Mother, chooses to hold us and embrace us and protect us. May we come to know her more. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, Lord, we believe that you will answer us, for we pray in the precious name of your Son, Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for goodness we have this bread to walk through which earth has given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of His name. For our good and the glory of His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life, and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings, your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself. That the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Thanks, broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. So die in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus. Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And with, your spirit. and with our eyes filled with the presence and the love of God, we look at each other and wish each other a sign. certainly welcome those who are home watching this Mass through live streaming. I invite you to make a good spiritual communion prayer to receive the Lord fully into your hearts, and we who are here will help you to do the special prayer. I invite you to repeat after me, my Jesus, my Jesus. I believe that you are present. I believe in, your in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. In the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you. I love you above all things. Above all things. And I desire to receive you. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Into my soul. Since I cannot, Since I cannot at this moment, at this moment receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually. Come at least spiritually. Into my heart. Into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace you. As if you were already there. As if you were already there. And unite myself. And unite myself. Holy to you. Holy to you. Never permit me. Never permit me. To be separated from you. To be separated from you. Amen. We invite those on the left hand side of the church to come to communion first.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit of the salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to Saint Michael. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust and have help Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please bring your used missiles with you when you leave your pew and deposit them in the box near the exit in the hall. Uh, also, please leave your kneeler down in your pew so the helpers will know which pews have been occupied so they can disinfect after Mass. We invite you to kneel for a few moments after the final hymn to pray silently for vocations and peace in the world for all people. Our final song of praise is number 498, Go Make a Difference. 